What's up, Airsofters? The classics are classics for a reason. And today, we have a classic example of a tried and true rifle, the Daniel Defense M4A1 Riz 2 SOP Mod in Block 2 flavor. This AEG version of the Daniel Defense M4A1 is a collaboration between the EVIC Manufacturing Group, or EMG, Daniel Defense, and G&P. The rail and receiver are both officially licensed by Daniel Defense, with accurate markings and trades on both. Every lower receiver has a unique serial number, and everything is made to be one-to-one -one with the real thing. Its aggressive looks and ubiquity among special operations teams means that it has appeared in numerous movies, TV shows, and video games. But this one has a juicy twist on the inside that really sets it apart. But before we get to that, let's cover everything about the outside first. This rifle in the real world is the go-to platform for SOCOM, starting back all the way into 2005. And as you can plainly see, it harkens back to a slightly older design philosophy with four full-length rails on the handguard, also known as quad rails. It's a defining feature on the real SOP Mod Block 2. By modern standards, it's a little chunky, but there's no denying that the quad rail is still one of the most robust and sturdy mounting options for all of your accessories and the ability to mount them everywhere. It's known for withstanding extreme abuse and still maintaining zero. For this reason and the fact that it's a rock solid free float design, it's been a staple for those who need something rugged that's set up for all sorts of attachments. Note the clamping locking system at the front. Another defining feature of the Block 2 is the ultra thick with two C's barrel that gives the platform incredible accuracy and durability in the long term. It's because in the military you won't be swapping out barrels all the time, you'd be putting out a lot of rounds. The thicker barrel helps with reliability. The airsoft version stays true to that with an extra thick with two C's outer barrel under the Daniel Defense free float quad rail. There's also an imitation gas tube under that handguard for the added touch of realism. Now, if you're planning on putting any sort of aftermarket muzzle attachment like a tracer or a mock suppressor or a loudener or a rubber chicken, remember that G&P is special and like Aries, like to use 14 millimeter positive threading. In that sense, they're still in the stone age. So make sure you keep that in mind when shopping at evic.com for barrel attachments. Let's move back from the handguard and talk about the rest of the receiver and externals. First things first, the all aluminum alloy receiver, upper and lower, have all the familiar controls of the AR-15 platform. You would have seen on the other side that this is not ambidextrous, it's single-sided. And anyone familiar with GNP rifles will have already noticed this, the dust cover is closed. Previous GNP rifles would not allow you to close the dust cover with the mock bolt installed. This was to mimic what a real M4 would look like during use, the dust cover being open to allow the ejection of spent casings. But airsofters don't have spent casings, and we don't usually need to worry about spent brass, and a lot of us like to keep those dust covers closed to help prevent ingress of dust and debris. So while the mock bolt sadly does not lock back, uh, it does allow you to close the dust cover. And that means a lot, doesn't it? The buffer tube, standard to GNP, is mil-spec, and the gun, also standard to GNP, is wired to the rear, meaning that you can install a buffer tube style battery, so anything with a, a stick type or a smaller nunchuck type will fit perfectly in the buffer tube, although the crane stock does not have a removable stock pad to allow for nunchuck ba uh, batteries down the sides of the crane stock from the rear, if you do want to run a nunchuck down the sides of the crane stock, you might have to get a little bit creative with how to tuck your wires since the rear cover is not removable. Me personally, I just run a stick type battery for the buffer tube, like a Titan 11.1. The nice thing about those is that at 2600 milliamps, you're going to have runtime all day. They've got incredible performance. And at where I run my stock extended to, I don't notice that lack of collapsibility due to the extra length of the battery. Yes, GNP still is the leader when it comes to including Deans right out of the box. And yes, everyone still has some catching up to do. Good on you, GNP. Lastly, the motor grip is an ergonomic design familiar to many. Personally, I'd put a more vertical grip on here because I play more CQB environments and I prefer a more vertical angle for my pistol grip. Uh, but it's very, very comfortable, looks nice, and fits the overall aesthetic. The gun ships with some 
functional, but quite frankly, cheap feeling backup iron sights. They're polymer and for not much money, you could really have some nice replacements here from evic.com. Uh, personally, I'd just go ahead and throw on your favorite optic and ignore the backup iron sights altogether. Uh, personally, I like the LPVO or the low power variable optic, like these short dot styles and primary arms make some awesome ones. Uh, you could also go with a, a simple red dot because at most of the distances you're gonna be firing your soft guns, you're not gonna need a zoom optic, but great options if you need them. So yes, to the untrained eye, it does just look like another M4, and I get that sentiment entirely, but this baby is hiding something special inside. But before we get into that, let's take a look at what it looks like in the box when it arrives at your door. The packaging the gun arrives in is quite classy, if I do say so myself. The lid lifts off, revealing the rifle securely surrounded with high quality foam. Even FedEx would have a hard time damaging this rifle during shipping. The rifle ships with a single 130 round mid capacity magazine and two information cards. Now these cards are important, so make sure you hang on to them. We're going to get into the use of one of these cards in just a minute. GNP built their reputation for excellence and reliability with this very same gearbox design. What it lacks in more modern conveniences like a quick change spring guide, it more than makes up for in time tested durability. Inside the reinforced shell, the precision gears ride on eight millimeter ball bearings. The piston has been set up with only 14 teeth with the second tooth removed. This makes your shots a bit snappier and indicates proper voluming for the barrel length. The piston head is polymer, but the cylinder head and the nozzle are aluminum, both with an O-ring. The cylinder itself has g &P's version of porting. Instead of a hole in the side of the cylinder, the back end of the cylinder is shaped on the inside to open up at the back, meaning that it only seals with the piston head at a certain distance inside. The coolest part about this whole setup is the Gate Aster MOSFET. This is the secret sauce that makes this gun shoot so nicely, as you'll see in the range portion of the video. The way the Aster works is by shining light onto the other side of the gearbox and reading the reflection of that light. As the trigger moves, the intensity of the detected light changes, and that's how it knows how far you've pulled the trigger. It also uses light to measure how the gears spin. The semi-auto cutoff cam on the sector gear interrupts a light beam between these two sensors, which allows the MOSFET to control how many shots take place per trigger pull. Gates products are all programmable through trigger pull, but also through their app. Stay tuned to evic.com for a more in-depth video on how to program your gate system, like the Aster. For now, let's take this animal outside and put it through its paces. All right, guys, we are downstairs in our outside testing facility. I have our DDM4A1 here set up with just an 11.1 volt LiPo battery and an ACSS Cyclops from Primary Arms. I think this is a great optic, especially for AR-15s and M4s. It's really easy to zero and the glass is really, really clear. Uh, as we discussed upstairs, it's a standard M4A1, so all of the controls are gonna feel right at home to M4A1 users. This is a non-ambidextrous model, so single-sided select fire switch, single-sided bolt release. To adjust your hop-up, it does not have a locking function, but GNP now does release with a rotary-style hop-up, which is huge for their M4s, as previously you were, they were using their standard original version 2 hop-up unit. Now, the big difference here, besides you know, it being a Daniel Defense licensed receiver, is they've included the original GNP version 2 gearbox and slapped the Aster in there. Now, the Aster has a lot of cool functions like three and five round burst, semi-auto lockout, or if you don't want to lock it out, that's fine too. I think one of the coolest programmable functions though is this, the binary trigger. One, two, one, two, one, two. Let's see how fast we can go, shall we? Now, of course, if that isn't fast enough, you can always put it on full auto and just go to town. But uh, the binary trigger function is pretty cool, don't you think? I've got a fresh Mega Point 25s in there. Let's see how this thing does on practical accuracy. 30, 35 feet. Oh, 
Right off the bat, obviously longer barrel means better accuracy. And at a close range like this, you wouldn't really notice the difference. But where it really matters is the length of the rail and barrel combined give you much better pointability. Depending on your frame, that longer barrel means that you can extend the front of that rifle out, giving you much more controllability on the front end of the rifle. Personally, I like rifle length and carbine length rifles for that reason because they're more pointable in a variety of situations but this close doesn't really tell you the whole picture let's go out a little further we've moved back out here to about 100 feet something more practical for the length of the rifle and the distances at which you'll be engaging people still got 0.25s in the magazine and the 11.1 volt lipo battery let's go ahead and give it a try Let's go see how we did. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, about 13 shots. Now, one thing I will mention is that it's a little bit windy today. And with 0.25s for an outdoor game, that may be a little light for you. So you might move up to something like a 0.28 or even a 0.32. This gun can definitely handle it. With that said though, at 100 feet, with a little bit of wind, we're still getting most of our rounds in a body size target. And this is actually pretty small for a body size target at that distance. So if you're looking for something that's going to remain accurate out at that distance, going with something like a longer barrel like this 12 inch DDM 4A1 is the right way to go. As per usual, we've just taken it out of the box and adjusted the hop up. We haven't cleaned the barrel. And even with great accuracy numbers like that, it's always a surefire bet that accuracy by volume wins out. As per usual, we've got our trusty X Cortec X3200 chronograph set up to read 0.2 gram BBs. I've got 0.2 gram BBs in my high cap magazine, and we're gonna go ahead and give it a chrono test. As you can see, it's chronoing right over 400 FPS. This is great for an outdoor gun. This is a little bit long for an indoor gun, so if you were gonna choose something uh, for indoor, maybe this wouldn't be your first choice, but of course, it's a modern version two gearbox, so spring changes are absolutely uh, something that you can do with standard version two parts. Let's give it an RPS test. Again, with our 11.1 volt battery, uh, the LiPo battery in the stock. So as you can see, we're right at 20 RPS out of this bad boy. Keep in mind that is with an 11.1 LiPo battery. If you use a different battery, you could expect some slight variations in those results, but right out of the box, that's great rate of fire and great FPS out of the DDM4A1.
You know, with more and more fields offering burst games as an option, you no longer have to go with a platform that had dedicated burst fire modes. The Aster has those programmable functions built in. So that gives you a wide range of playable game types to make this a more versatile platform for you. Plus the availability of three and five round burst and all of the other programmable features in the Aster make it an awesome platform for everyone that's looking to customize their airsoft gameplay. Let's head back to the studio. Look, I'd be lying if I told you that I wasn't a huge fan of the DDM4A1 or the Mark 18 or the Block 2, 3, or 1 for that matter. They're awesome looking rifles and there's a reason they've been in every movie and video game since the early 2000s. And there are a ton of ways to get a rifle that looks just like this in Airsoft. But the GNP DDM4A1 is one of the only ways you can get it in the 12 and a half with the Gate Aster programming built in. Now I know that this handguard looks familiar and that's because the Daniel Defense Riz 2 is one of the most popular handguards in Airsoft for M4s. But rather than trying to upgrade another M4, you can get the entire package and start your Block 2 or DDM 4A1 build right here. And you don't have to do any teardown or upgrades to the gearbox since it's already built for high performance with the Gate Aster giving you tons of programmability and customization. To find out even more information about this awesome EMG DDM4A1 Block 2 or Riz 2 Daniel Defense collab, check it out on our website right here at evic.com and tune into our social media at Facebook and Instagram to find out the latest product releases, other lengths that will be available, and cool photos of all the ways that we choose to customize and upgrade our Mark 18s, DDM 4A1s, Block 2, 3s, and everything else SopMod comes up with in the near and distant future. As always, play hard, play respectfully, play responsibly. See you guys later. with four full length rails on the handguard, also known as quad rails. It's a defining feature of the real SOP mod block it, block, block it, block. What is that, what is that, error, error 404? Yeah. <laughs>